News from today's sessions of the Supreme Soviets of Azerbaijan, Ukraine, Russia and Moldova. In Prednistrov, a ceasefire agreement is in effect. New information on the accident on the Moscow-Riga railway. Russia will become a founding member of the Union of Baltic Sea States, a report from Copenhagen. A report from the Mideast peace negotiations in Washington. Good evening. Those are today's main news stories, now more detailed information. We can say that today in the CIS countries was a big parliamentary day. In Baku, the extra extraordinary session of the Azerbaijani Supreme Soviet was opened. The political situation in that republic is still very complex. A new Supreme Soviet chairman was chosen today. A moment of silence was observed by the deputies in memory of the victims of the tragedy in Khodjali. The announcement by the chairman of the Republic Supreme Soviet, Kafarov, that he will resign for health reasons came as a surprise to many deputies. An election was held to choose a new parliamentary leader, Yagot Mamedov, a member of the Azerbaijani Academy of Sciences and the dean of the Azerbaijani Medic Medicinal uh, Institute, was, who was the only candidate, was elected. The session was held at uh, the initiative of the National Council because of the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh and the regions bordering Armenia. The deputies will also discuss the social and political situation in the republics. An analysis of the conflict with Armenia was made uh, by the republic's president, Ayaz Mutalibov, in his speech. He emphasized the need to mobilize all resources to guarantee that Azerbaijani borders remain inviolable and intact. Ayaz Mutalibov expressed his belief in the need to create a regular national army. The president's report caused controversy. The parliamentary session was accompanied by a meeting outside organized by the opposition to demand the res resignation of the republic's leadership. We will present more detailed information on the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh a little later in the broadcast. Now I would like to direct your attention to the fact that Ukrainian President Leonid Kravchuk proposed today at a session of the Republican so Supreme Soviet to declare a state of economical emergency for the entire year of 1992. The president noted that today the main task, and it is impossible to dispute this, is to stop the political games which worsen the situation. The square before the Ukrainian parliament was unexpectedly empty this morning to, to the honor of the peasants. Despite their tradition, they did not abandon their farms and fields last fall and did not come here with posters to remind the deputies of the importance of the issues on the agenda. Now, as well, they are honorably carrying out the spring work in the fields. Even if there is no fuel, shortage of seeds or fertilizer, no spare parts, and to buy a new combine for millions of rubles, a whole collective farm would have to work for an entire year. President Kravchuk spoke. He said that rural issues must be dealt with comprehensively because not only agriculture is in decline today. It seems somewhat unexpected for many de deputies that the president proposed to the Supreme Soviet to adopt a decree on the introduction of a state of economic emergency in Ukraine until the end of 1992. This would suspend the force of several laws which require large expenditures of money to enforce. The vote on this proposition by the president was po postponed. It is not easy to report the whole full agenda of the Republican Supreme Soviet in Russia, so here is a short summary of the deputies' work today. They adopted a law on security, discussed the message of President Boris Yeltsin on reconsideration of the law on local and regional councils of people's deputies and regional administration. This law is awaited impatiently because it is the legal basis for conducting local economic reform. The main item today, however, was that the Russian Supreme Soviet adopted an appeal to the People's Supreme Soviet and President of Tatarstan, motivated by the deputy's concern over the recent events there, which threatened to unleash inter-ethnic conflict in the Republic and to destroy the Russian Federation. The appeal says in part, the Russian Federation Supreme Soviet believes that the people and the highest organs of state authority in Tatarstan will make 
a decision and display the, wis display the wisdom which will allow all of us effectively and without causing harm to one another to bring to life our historical mis mission of radical economic transformation and creation of a democratic Russian Federation as a unified country of free and sovereign states. In Kishinev, the Supreme Soviet of the Moldovan Republic has renewed its work. As was expected, the main attention was given to the events in Dubasari. Both conflicting sides declared the need to solve the conflict by means of peaceful political negotiation. But this is at the level of politicians. However, despite the continuing negotiations in the, in the Republic, the mood is growing to resolve conflicts by force. Our correspondent reports from Kishinev and Dubasari. At the session, the Moldova and President Snegur reported on the results of his trips to the United States, Canada, Finland and Holland and, and his participation in meetings at the UN. He emphasized that the main result of these meetings was the acceptance of Moldova as an equal member of the United Nations and the establishment of diplomatic relations with these countries. The President devoted attention to the situation in Pridnistrov. He informed the deputies upon, that upon the, his return to the Republic he took a series of steps to control the conflict in Dubasara. He held a meeting with Smirnov, one leader of Pridnistrov, and reached agreement to halt all hostile activities there. But there is still no agreement reached on the fundamental issues of the crisis. Today, the head of the Moldovan state sent a telegram to Boris Yeltsin and Ruslan Khazbalatov in which he expressed his protest about the interference of Cossacks in the Republic's internal affairs. The president repeated his intention to resolve all conflicts by peaceful political means. The Moldovan parliament adopted two appeals to the Russian Federal Supreme Soviet and to the Ukrainian Parliament. They contain an appeal to assist in the regulation of the conflict on the West Bank of the Dniester, the observance of laws and the territorial in integrity of Moldova. A conference commission agreed to establish direct communication links between Kishinev and Tiraspol and also to consider exchanging pris prisoners by each side and a withdrawal of armed forces from the battle zone. However, the tension is not being reduced in the area. Literally 15 minutes after the signing of the documents, and this was not yet known in Dubasare, a driver of a municipal electrical service was critically wounded by a shot fired into his car. He died later in the hospital. Shots were heard in the village of Kachieri. This is the territory where the Regiment of Civil Defense of the 14th Army of the CIS Armed Forces used to be. It's now occupied by supporters of the Moldovan Popular Front and local residents who have taken the arms from the regiment. Today, a new fact became known. During the seizure of arms and equipment of the regiment, a special vehicle carrying a container holding radioactive cesium was stolen from the chemical weapons arsenal. For several hours, the military did not know its whereabouts, then discovered it and returned it to the unit. The condition of the container is unknown. The capsules containing the deadly radiation, radioactive substance are unknown at this hour. Let's hope they're still intact. And the bloodshed continues in Nagorno-Karabakh. As always, contradictory information is coming in. Azer Inform news agency reports that shooting on the Azerbaijani village of Serhaven in Nagorno-Karabakh, which began by Armenian units last night, continued until this morning. About 10 are dead, many are wounded. But the attempt by Armenian units this morning to seize the village were repulsed. The Armen Press news agency reports from the Armenian Defense Ministry that a According to preliminary data, 11 were killed and 13 wounded in the village of Kazanchi in Nagorno-Karabakh as a result of an atta attempt by Azerbaijani forces to take it by storm. In the area where the 366th Motor Re Rifle Regiment was deployed in Stepanakert Kendi, self-defense forces of Nagorno-Karabakh are taking up positions. This was reported to the Interfax correspondent by the acting chief of the CIS Armed Forces Press Service, service Nikolai Medvedev. According to him, these armed units are trying to prevent the withdrawal of the regiment by blocking the roads. At the same time, the Minister of Defense of the Azerbaijani Republic, Gusein Sadikov, told a press conference at the United Nations today about a plan to regulate the peace in Nagorno-Karabakh. He said this plan will be presented in the near future to the UN Security Council.
Economic news. In the city of Timer Tau in Karaganda region, the leaders of the metallurgical enterprises of Russia and Kazakhstan have gathered to discuss further cooperation. The Karaganda Metallurgical Factory in the city of Timer Tau is one of the leading factories of the branch. Thousands of agreements and mutual deliveries link this Kazakhstan factory with the other republics of the former Soviet Union. If even one link is lost, it would cause the severe disruption along the entire technological chain. The producers have gathered here at this factory to discuss how to preserve the existing links as the Union is divided into independent republics and the economy exists within tight political borders. The meeting was held by the first Deputy Prime Minister of Kazakhstan, the 